what is it about your playing style, Jack, um, that uh, makes you made you the right choice for Bruce and Stephen? It's a combination of growing up sort of as a as an R and B bass player. Yeah. Like I really, I when I sort of started playing clubs and stuff, all the music that was appealing to me was all the bass line stuff, you know, like uh, Skin Tight, you know, by the Ohio Players, yeah. For the Love of Money, for, by the OJs, you know, all the Jamerson stuff, and, you know, Lewis Johnson. So those are the things that I grew up really wanting to emulate. And then I got more and more into the rock stuff. So... And I think that's really, you know, if you look at Bruce's band, uh, you know, the E Street Band, or you look at the Disciples of Soul, they're really R&B bands with rock, you know, or, or however you want to look at it. And even uh, Lenny Kravitz's band, who I was with for 15 years, that's really an R&B gig, in my opinion. I mean, it, to most people, they think, oh, it's, it's rock. You guys are going to go my way. That's, you know, it's rock. But really, the core foundation of all of that music is R&B. So I think it's that combination that makes um, that makes me, you know, a, a viable uh, choice for those bands, you know. And and obviously, the reason why I got called to sub for Gary was because Stephen, you know, said, you know, Jack's Jack's the right guy for this, and he just yeah. you know, he stood up for me. So. That's sort of a, and, and I got, you know, I, I was able to play with Bruce four or five times with Steven. Yeah. So he was at least familiar with me uh, to that, you know, extent, you know. Well, you know, Jack, it's interesting. And this goes back to what we were talking about a minute ago, which is the, the diverse music that, and I'll just refer to the Disciples of Soul right now, that you guys play. And, you know, a lot of the stuff is newer and their originals, but there's a lot of stuff that you're playing that are little Steven songs that, you know, he may have written by himself or with Bruce, uh, like, you know, Love on the Wrong Side of Town, stuff that was on the, the Soul Fire album. But then also, because I've seen you guys, uh, I've, I saw you at the Laid Back Festival. I happened to be in New York on business and I went there and and Bruce joined you guys on stage. I happened to be at the Beacon Theater because I was, was in New York again on business, so I was fortunate. But you know, one of the things that strikes me is that you're not only playing the new stuff, which you know I'm going to ask you about that as well, but there's the old stuff, which are covers like Kill and Floor, Grooving is Easy, and then the stuff that you know, little Steven performed before I Am a Patriot, you know, where you weren't involved. In terms of the bass lines that you play, um, does little Steven give you leeway? Does he have ideas? Does he like you to sort of follow what's been done before, where it's been recorded? Uh, just curious. Well, I think in terms of the stuff that we recorded from before, you know, the older material, I, my natural tendency would be to learn what was there unless he sort of steered us in a different direction. Like a good example of that is standing in the line of fire, which is nothing like the original uh, version, you know, was changed dramatically. Um, so it really depends. And a lot of times if Steven did give me like input, uh, it might be more like, you know, I want the bass to be more like bright or aggressive or, you know, or like Motown-y, like it would be, it wouldn't be specific. It would be more like a generalization, like he kind of wanted, like a direction he wanted to go. So a lot of it is based on my own instincts and, you know, just looking at him and, and knowing instinctively by looking at him, if I'm taking it in the right direction, you know, <laughs> you'll know what Steven, he'll let you know, you know. Yeah, I mean, and, and like we're talking about it, it's a great, you know, variety of, of music. I mean, to go, you know, I, I just keep going back to that Soul Fire album, you know, Do What, James Brown, you know, there, there's a little bit of everything. And one of the things I love about little, there's a million things I love about little Steven, just in terms of his philanthropy, you know, his music, you know, what he did, he brought the rascals back. I mean, I could go on and on. Yeah, and on. He, he's, a, he's a special cat, I, I know. Yeah, but but I love how he and I can't remember if the song uh, 
is if the blues is my business where he cops the lead to killing floor as the intro to that song. And he does it in a way where, you know, he's not ripping it off. He's doing it in a very respectful. Yeah. Way. And, and, and because he grew up, you know, listening to that stuff, you know, right. so, so anything that you sort of put in the, you know, the, the system, it's going to come out. Right. And it might be, it could be similar or it could be just a little bit of it, but you know, in that case, maybe it's a little more than a little bit, but, but uh, yeah, you know, he, he grew up, he's a, you know, he's a blues guitar player. He's, you know, he, and I think a lot of times people don't think of him that way, you know, because of how he plays with Bruce, but he grew up playing that stuff. You know, yeah. So. yeah. He's uh, I really think, you know, I think he's underappreciated in a lot of ways, but especially as a guitar player. I mean, I think he's a extremely, guitar player. yeah. I, and I think just as a, 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 an arranger, a songwriter, I think, you know, I think he, he doesn't get half the credit he deserves. So right. I'm uh, I'm all on that team. I'm completely. He, he is really I'm, the architect of that whole, you know, between the uh, South Side Johnny, that whole Asbury Park uh, sound, the sound that, you know, the world came to know. That's I, really little Stephen was really. You know, I, I totally agree with you. And uh, I just did an interview. This guy's doing a thing on the, the New Jersey sound and I kept steering him back to, you know, basically steering him back to Asbury Park and Stephen and Bruce and, and Southside because, you know, if you're in Rome and you ask someone about the Asbury Sound, you know, I mean, at the New Jersey Sound, they're going to they're gonna reference Bruce. They're going to reference Southside. They're going to reference Stephen if they're hip to it, but, right. but they're certainly going to reference Bruce. But, you know, I, I think things like 10th Avenue Freeze Out, you know, is a lot of that sound is, is Stephen, you know, his horn arranging and well, well, let's say you filled some pretty big shoes there, Gary Talent. Yeah, yeah it was fun. It was fun. It was a, uh, it was a cool experience. Stephen called me like a week before, um, and he, he just gave me a call and he said, you know, we're do we're doing this SNL thing, and he goes, right. I, I think I'm going to need you to step in, and I said, well, when is it? And he goes, oh, it's next week. And I had a, an, a, I had a client, I had a big session in my studio, and I was. I was like, oh, geez, Stephen, I don't know. I got, I got, I got a session, and Stephen just sort of went. <laughs> 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 Didn't really say like a real word. He just sort of groaned, and I was just like, okay, all right, I'm good. I'll, I'm there, you know. And you I just didn't realized have to see that. his face, the look on his face. You, you yeah. heard that noise, and that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was the end of that conversation. I was like, okay, you can count on me. I'm, I'm, I'm down. You know, so. You know when I put the TV on that night, at first I was surprised not to see Gary. Right. And then I saw you back and I'm going, who is that guy? Because he kind of looks familiar. Right. It's a Joe's interview. Uh, you know, so, so we, we were already really tuned into you from, cause Joe had written about you a few weeks before that. Right. And you know, when I thought about it, because I'm very into the last two Bruce albums, even more so than any of the old stuff, since the new West record one, is I'm really into it. The two new records. I just love them both. Yeah. So you know, I start thinking, and Gary has has always had a particular style, kind of economical, but always the perfect. Part. Right. Right. When, when it steps you were, out, it's like perfect. Yes. Now, when you approach that, how much did you try and channel him? How much is you? And just before you answer that question, I notice there's a part in Ghosts where, in the middle of the song, you're grooving back there, and all of a sudden, you kind of slide up. You slide way up on that bass and, and you kind of step out a little bit. And I, and I, and I, you know, and I felt it and I, and I, and I said to myself, gee, I wonder if that's him because he just feels it. He's got to go there. Or if they told him do everything the same, or, or did they give you freedom to, to be yourself? They, uh, well, well, first of all, let me just say that that slide is on the record. That's okay. That's Gary play. I have the record, but you know, um, yeah, it's, it's a little, hard to make out but um i got a, i got a bass tape so i was able to learn it exact and um and it's you know that track in particular i learned four songs uh i learned the two that we did and i learned uh priest which is absolutely what a masterpiece that song is you know if i was a priest um but I, but i learned four songs and ghost was the one song when i listened to it i was like First listen, I thought, God damn, that sounds like me playing. You know, it just, it was, it, it's, it's Gary, but it's, it, it's very much in, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a style that I'm very familiar with. Um, 
so yeah so the slides and stuff like that i call those crowd pleasers you know when you do those kind of please slides. Me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that that is actually and it's it's a very similar kind of slide to like the bass slide in uh 19th nervous breakdown yeah it's a full it's a full octave slide you know from the from the 12th fret all the way down to the low e you know so uh yeah I copped it, but it, it's from, it's off the record. Gary, well, I, Gary, I, Gary. I saw you kind of lift off the ground a little, and I said, "Oh, he's he's into it. He's really yeah. into it now." You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I I try the what I tried to do is I tried to basically play the stuff as close as I could to Gary, and not draw too much attention to myself. You know, out of respect for the situation and what I was there to do, which was not like have everyone go, "Well, look at you know." There's a different guy playing bass. My my job was more to sort of fill the void, uh, you know, because Gary couldn't make it and and just sort of uh, do the job and not have anyone go, oh, God, you know, it's not happening. You know, I wanted it to just be to feel the same for people if, if I could do that. You know, it was great. It was really great. I, I, I rewatched it and it's it's just, you know, I'm being a fan, but I rewatched it and it's, you know, that's a live band. Nothing yeah. like a live band. Yeah. And let us let us at this point point out the neuroticism of know your bass player and that here we are watching Bruce Springsteen and yet we're focusing on the bass player and making totally. notes of every glissando, every trill. <laughs> and, and a red P bass. Yeah. <laughs> and a red. Yeah. Now, let me take now, uh, Jack, I mean, uh, obviously you, you, you're performing on one of the most uh, watched TV shows in the planet. And not only that, you got bass players watching your every move. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know what the what's more pressure <laughs> but um how do you prepare talk about the pressure of playing on live tv I mean come on there's no restarts there's no second takes you got millions of people watching uh this is you know this is a different milieu what how do you prepare yourself or is it just years of experience that it's second nature to you no, I, I think that in in a, in, a, in a case like that you want to be over prepared almost yeah. so that if uh if for any reason something happens that pulls you out where like you can lose your concentration or, yeah. you know, get freaked, you know, you just have to know the song so well that your hands will do the, they'll do the job, even if your brain, you know, takes you down the wrong path, <laughs> you know, so I was just very well prepared. I just was like, you know, okay, I got to know the stuff inside and out. You know, I've done I've done a lot of TV. I mean, I yeah. think I've done I've probably played on Letterman twenty times with Lenny Kravitz alone. Yeah, he used yeah. to play for every single. I think I've done SNL four times. I did it with uh, with Lenny. I did it with uh, Lenny. We we played with Beyonce and right. Jay Z. Right. Uh, it's the most nerve wracking and it's the most intense. And it's it's not just because it's live. It's also because it's New York. It's a hundred percent New York, you know, everything about the energy of it, the flow of it, the way that, you know, you wait and then they call you and then you're standing in the hall and the show's going on out there. And it's, it's intense. I mean, it is an intense show to play and, you know, playing it, you know, with the E street band <laughs> sort of doubles that up. But, uh, but I felt very comfortable. They were, they were super, super nice to me. And, um, you know, me and Steven are close. We've been playing together for, you know, four years um and that gets you halfway ready for something like that i mean steven's the disciples is a, is no that's a no joke that's you know i said to someone once i said this isn't uh you know three mistake a night band this is a one mistake a tour band you oh. might want to make one mistake a tour you get away with it you, you told me that <laughs> I, I remember you told me that jack yeah you start making two a night you know you're you're on your way out the door it's a serious <laughs> outfit so you know we 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 get used to being you know trying to keep things on that level and you just have to it's it's focus really it's focus and not letting you know the bad things in your brain get the best of you you know because we know the songs everyone knows the songs but sometimes you start thinking, you know, about something or whatever, and you know, you know, you can you can screw up. But I, you know, I try hard to focus. And muscle memory, it's a lot. Yes, of muscle memory is what will. You know, um, I read once, and it was a thing about nerves. You know, and it was around the time that I had stopped playing live for like three or four years. I was just doing studio work, and I was reading this thing about nerves because I was concerned. You know, if I'm still going to be able to, you know keep it together 
And what this, the basic premise of this was that half of what nerves are is you knowing in your brain that you're not prepared enough. Mm -hmm. You don't have the material down so well that you, 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 you can make a mistake. So you sort of have to be over-prepared so that you know you can't make a mistake. And that gets rid of the nerves. You know, that yeah. gets rid of that, you know? Okay. And what about the, um, what about choosing the P bass for the gig? Uh, Gary played a P bass on the, on the uh, record. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I checked with the engineer. I said, what, what bass did he use? He said he used a P bass. So, so I figured, you know, gets you half, well, it doesn't get you halfway there, but gets you 20% there anyway, right? Got the right bass. <laughs> <laughs> and that bass, my, my 65 p bass is a great sound and bass so wow. um you, you can't go wrong with that i tend to play jazz is more live because i like yeah, i see you yeah. i like the balance you know i yeah. like the way they feel when you strap them on same with the music man that thing just sits there it's like doesn't i don't like the neck heavy thing you know and p yeah bass, great great weight distribution and contoured body the p is the uh, we always banter about this the P is the heavyweight champion in the studio. It is. Well, it is. But when it comes to playing live, the J is just so versatile and comfortable. That, you know. I completely agree with that statement in every way. That's a That's, KYBP mantra. That would. Oh be yeah, we we battle yeah. about. We, we, yeah, we, but we, it, it's, it's hard to beat the P in the studio. I mean, it, it, it is. The split coil is the sound of God in the studio. It's the. Yeah. You know. Hey Jeff, right. what was what, what was the rehearsal like for that? Show. I mean, I know, you know, it's it's like everything else when we're going into a situation like that, like you just said, we would shed as much as we can to master it the best we can, but then you have to actually get together and play. What was that rehearsal like? We went, uh, everyone went out to Bruce's uh, ranch and we, we rehearsed the songs for, you know, a couple hours and, um, you know, just, uh, just set up basically live and, uh, and, and just rehearsed in the room, just like any band would. And, um, you know, it, it was just a regular, I mean, other than the fact that we all, you know, were getting COVID tests, you know. Yeah, wow. Four, seven. I got six tests during the course of doing the, the show and, 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 you know, the ramp up to it and, and, and after. But it was just a regular rehearsal. And then we rehearsed again at SNL on Thursday, which was sort of a sound check yeah. rehearsal um so yeah just nothing really nothing really out of out of the ordinary about that just we just sort of rehearsed played mm -hmm. through the stuff you know and bruce just said you know basically said sounds great you know so that was it you know <laughs> i'm not gonna question the boss if he says it sounds great you know? 